so nice to see you back uh, after a couple weeks of uh, surgery and then uh, you've been sick and it's great to have you. How many are feeling better from last week? Uh, many of you were sick last week and uh, our family was and we're coming out of that. Thank God. And uh, if there's others that are sick, we're going to just trust the Lord to meet our needs. Uh, this morning I was feeling a little shaky. I had to slip out and get a couple candy bars. And so now I'm really excited. <laughs> I just ate a Three Musketeer and a Milky Way during the greeting. They were just little ones, just little ones, but I'm ready, and I hope you're ready as well, because we got a lot of ground to cover this morning. My message will be short, and then the application will be a little bit long, uh, just to, to kind of prepare your minds for that. And uh, I, some of you were asking this morning when you came in, saying, they kind of took a double take, looking at me kind of funny, and uh, yes, it's true. I, thanks, you can turn the lights on. Um, I do have a black eye. It seems like about once a year, that happens to me. I'm not sure what's up with that. But uh, this last Tuesday night, I was playing basketball. Unfortunate, uh, my neighbor right across the street, he's a great ball player. Uh, I was guarding him, and he came up, uh, going to the hoop, took me to the hole, and his elbow just caught my eye. It was a fluke. It didn't even really hurt that bad. I did kind of grab it, and then all of a sudden, all this, I mean, it was blood gushing, and I'm like, oh, man, four stitches later, and then it swells up and all this. I'm like, what? My luck, you know? I mean... I'm not that crazy, <laughs> but um, anyway, so thank you if you want to pray for me that my eye heals up all the way, and uh, it has been causing some headaches at night by the end of the night, but uh, last night, no, no issues really, so I, hopefully I'm uh, beyond that. Um, that'll be good. Well, the last several years, we've taken the opportunity, the first few Sundays of the year, to revisit our mission and our vision and our core values to answer the question, why do we exist? How many think that's important to do on occasion, to remind ourselves of why we're here? And last week we said that our priority number one is our connection with God. Nothing else in life is more important than our connection with God. And we talked about four things from Philippians chapter 3, that we had to flee the present, we had to forget the past, we had to focus on purpose, on what God has called us to do, and then we've got to finish the process. That none of us has, have arrived. That we, none of us have, have come to a place where we can say, well, I've obtained all of this and there's nothing more spiritually, emotionally, uh, financially, whatever, to, to, to gain. In fact, Paul, if you would ask Paul, he went in Philippians 3 there, he would say something very much like this. He would say, I am not mature, or I am mature enough to know that I am not mature enough. And that's kind of hard to get our mind around. We talked about it last week, but I'm not, I'm mature enough to know that I'm not mature enough. That, just saying that, you know what? I've got room to grow. There's areas in my life that need to, especially in connection with God, that I need to be cultivating. And so our connection with God is number one. Well, this week we want to shift our focus to the second part of our mission. Our mission, if you have put, uh, if you look in your bulletins, our mission is to be a spirit-filled church committed to glorifying God by connecting the people of the lakeshore with God. That's a connecting with God with each other, which we're going to talk about this morning, and then next week we're going to talk about connecting with the world in a real unique way, and uh, we're excited about that. And you say, well, where do these things come from? Well, Matthew 28, 19 talks about the connecting with the world. We're going to talk about that next week. But turn with me, just as review, to some of you who are saying, hey, this is familiar, and you're saying, boy, I've heard this before, we've talked about this before, and I would say, right on. If, you, if you're remembering it, that means it's starting to click and starting to connect with you and, uh, and hopefully is meaningful to you. But in Matthew chapter 22, verse 37, Jesus was asked, you know, what's the greatest command? And the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they're always trying to trip Jesus up and trying to get him to, you know, to stumble on his words and trying to do some of these things. But Jesus says, so wisely, he says in verse 37, he says, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. You know, I remember coming to this church in October of 2006. So six and 
a little bit years ago. And I remember talking about this that first season and saying, you know what? We are never going to get away from those two verses, those uh, couple verses. That our job is to connect with God and to connect with each other. And so today, we're going to launch a plan, and we've been kind of uh, talking about it and promoting it. We're going to unfold how we are going to accomplish this, how we're going to connect with each other today. And as we go through the, through the day, we're going to talk a little bit about what we're calling connecting points. And really, it's a compliment. Uh, uh, culmination, I'm sorry, of some work that we started back in the fall. And really, it's a launching point for us today uh, as we talk about these connecting points. And the reason we're going to talk about connecting points, and we'll describe what they, they are in just a minute, is because there's a problem in our society. In our society, we often will uh, thrive on isolation and individualism. You can be in a crowd at the mall or here at church or at work, but feel really lonely. There could be all kinds of activity around you, but feeling out of place like you haven't connected. I talked about in the fall that it's possible that there are couples or individuals that will come and try out the church for a season, the Gateway Church, and then continue their search for a church home, and they don't even know why. It's not the church. The Gateway Church is a wonderful place. They love the preaching. The the music is right up their alley. It's not the people. The people were friendly and gracious and helpful and kind. And it was not the children's ministry. It was clean and safe, and they did a great job with the kids. They would even explain, people would, that they experienced God, that they felt the presence of God. But the problem is that there are people that may leave because they never felt connected. And there's a second problem or an additional problem. We know that we're called to be disciples, right? We are called as as believers to to go and make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Matthew 28, 19. That's the great everyday commission, we call it. But you cannot disciple without relationship, without being together. And we talked about this in the fall. There was five things that we wanted to remember when we talked about discipleship. I want to just kind of put those up for your review. The first one was that disciples are rarely made in rows. And, we, you know, we are in rows this morning, and that's by intention. And we, we do that so we can kind of have a mass gathering, a, a celebration-type service. But you know what? The New Testament model... They had in Acts 2 and Acts 4 and Acts 5 and Acts 20, we looked at that in the fall, there was large and small group gatherings that met weekly. And those small groups were often where the the meat and the the real growth was uh, accomplished. The second thing is that real disciples make disciples. And we talked about this, boy, this is challenging. If you are not actively making disciples, you may not be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ because disciples reproduce disciples. The third thing was that you do not have to arrive before you start making disciples. And how many are thankful for that truth, amen? That it doesn't matter where you are along the journey. And I love, we've been studying Paul last week and we're going to talk about him a little bit today. But Paul, he was very candid about his weaknesses and about his struggles. He admitted that he had not arrived. In fact, I love some of the verses. I relate to it so much. He talks about a thorn in his flesh, or he talks about you know the things that he wants to do, he doesn't do, but the things that he doesn't want to do, he ends up doing. How many can relate to that at times in our journey with the Lord? You don't have to arrive before you start making disciples. Number four, disciple making, it takes time. We know that. And there's long-term, it's a long-term process. And we are committed to that here at the Gateway Church. And we trust and hope that you individually are committed to a long-term engagement with others. And number five, that we are all given opportunities to invest in others according to our abilities. And we studied in the fall, Matthew 25, and we looked at the parable of the talents. And we say, you know what? We all have abilities. We all have things that we can contribute. And it's our job to do that. But it, with all of those things, and there's many other things we could be reminded of in, about discipleship, we know this to be true, that there is no discipleship without 
relationships. And there's a personal struggle that I've had, a frustration or maybe a complaint, uh, that as I've looked over the past six years, that if there's one or two things that kind of jump out is that there are people that will show up on Sundays and not be engaged the rest of the week with the Lord or with others. And my heart goes out to them. And I, and I would say, boy, if I was able, I would force every single one of you to be in some sort of relationship outside of these four walls that would sharpen you and that would grow you. You say, really? Why? And you really, would you really force us to do that? And I, and I would. Because I, as I've viewed, there are God's people that are not connecting with Him on a regular basis like they should or could. There are God's people that are not connecting to each other or to the greater community for the sake of the gospel. And again, no one has arrived, but we can do a whole lot better. In my heart, for you as their pastor, out of love, it would be to say, you know what, this is good for you. Almost like a parent would say, you know what, you're going to drink your milk or you're going to finish the broccoli or whatever the case. I would encourage you. I would force you to be involved in some sort of connecting point, if I could. Now, the goal and what a connecting point is, is we're going to describe it today. It's the goal is to get people together that have common interests to connect them with God and with each other. It's that simple. In fact, in just a minute, we're going to give out a uh, a pamphlet, a brochure that uh, Bonnie's been working hard on. It looks great, Bonnie. Thanks. But on the back, it just talks about the connecting points are groups of people with similar interests who meet regularly with the goal of connecting with God and each other. That's the goal. It's really simple. And uh, it's not uh, just a good idea or it's not just some option that we are providing as a church. We believe strongly that it is a biblical mandate straight from Scripture. In fact, I want you to turn with me to John chapter 17. And we want to look at a few of these verses as uh, Jesus really passionately uh, describes how he longs for us to be in relationship with him and his Father and for us to be together. Let's look at this in John chapter 17. The progression, it's close to the end of Jesus' earthly ministry. Uh, Jesus has experienced all kinds of things. And at the beginning of John chapter 17, Jesus uh, prays for himself in a great prayer. Then he prays for his disciples, the ones that he's been with, that he's been walking with. But then he comes to verse 20 and he says this. He says, my prayer is not only for them. Not for only the disciples that have been with me, but I pray also for those who will believe in me through the message of the disciples. That's us. He's talking about us. He's praying for you and praying for me. And now listen to what his prayer is. That all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. Verse 23, I in them and you in me, may they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Verse 24, Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am. He longs for that relationship with with him, doesn't he? And to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you love me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them, and you continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them, and that I may um, I, that I myself may be in them. Those words are really powerful. A prayer for you and for me. That really is a passionate plea for us to be connecting with God, and then to be one together. I believe that God desires for us to grow together. Do you believe that? And if we do that, the result is is that we will be empowered, that we will grow. I believe our call as believers, if we are born again, that we are called to be ordained 
ministers of the gospel. You say, no, that's just for the pastors, right? Or those that have been Bible trained or that have gone to seminary or whatever. No. Each and every one of us, if you are born again, you are a God-called, God-ordained minister. You are called to be a disciple. We must be more than just Sunday morning attenders. And I say that from the bottom of my heart, that we must be about God's business. And we are at our best, I believe, when we're small enough to sit around a circle, facing each other, sharing the joy, the benefits of being together. And if that's going to happen, we must provide opportunities for people to be close enough to know one another, close enough to share and to care, to, be, to challenge and to support each other to confide in one another, to confess our sins. How about this? To forgive and to be forgiven. We need to be close enough to laugh, to weep together, to be accountable to each other, to watch over each other, to grow together. But none of that happens alone. None of that happens in isolation. I believe that spiritual growth and character grow out of interactive relationships. And it's just so important. So practically, I want to talk about this for a second. In the fall, we decided to go to two services. And I believe God's honoring that. And we've had our strongest numbers in the history of the church, uh, not only uh, with people getting saved in the fall and uh, early this year, which has been really wonderful, um, also financially, and just God's really blessing that. We, we trust the Lord in the process. And we're, we've talked about that we're connected by the unity of our mission and our vision statement and our doctrine. Even though you may come to one service and not see others, we're still connected together. And it's only, we're only really limited by the size of our facility. And that's why we went to two services, to be able to allow God to, to give us more. And we believe that God wants to continue to allow us to grow and to be bigger. You say, well, you, you want to be bigger, but you just said it's important for us to be smaller, right? Well, the reality is, is that each of us really only have the capability to know about 70 people. Some, pe- some people may say up to 100 people. And if that's the truth, if, that, if we can only know 100 names or to really know uh, 70 to 100 individually, um, you know, to know people well, whether we're 170, which we averaged in, uh, in the fall, or we're 1,700, or for that matter, 17,000, right? We need opportunities to be smaller so we can know those 70 or those 100 outside of our Sunday celebration services. And that's why we're asking that you would consider to join us in our connecting points. I'm going to ask Bonnie, maybe you can help me, and uh, Chris, if you could jump up and help. On the back counter, there are brochures that we want to hand out We want to make sure everybody gets a copy in their hand, uh, each person here. And really what this is, it's it's a pamphlet, and on the back it talks about connecting points, and I'll kind of start there, and then we'll kind of jump in and looking at the specifics. But it says that connecting points are groups of people with similar interests who meet regularly, like I mentioned, with the goal of connecting with God and with each other. Now, there are different types of groups that you'll see here, and as we move throughout the year, there are three types of groups that we'll be meeting. One is that it's all about Bible. Uh, it's a Bible study, uh, or you're studying through Scripture, and we've got a few of those uh, this time around. The second is the practical life groups, maybe a, a life group that kind of meets to talk about parenting or finances or marriage or, or uh, lots of other things that we could talk about. Those are practical life groups. And then the third is social life groups, crafting, the, when outdoor stuff, sports stuff, um, different ideas that will emerge, I believe. You say, well, when do these meet? Well, they, they'll meet for a season. We're going to do it in terms. They'll meet weekly or monthly with a start and an end date. Where do they meet? They can meet anywhere. And who can lead one? Anyone can pretty much lead one of these uh, with leadership approval, of course. And, uh, and we want to do that. And so what we want to do here um, now is to take a few moments and to kind of take you through this 
uh, pamphlet. And I've got a few people that are here that, that want to talk about some of these, but I want to open it up on the very first page. There's On the very left side, it says Connect Series. Now, some of you that have been with us for the past several years, you are familiar with these terms, Connect 101, Connect 201, Connect 301. And we want to provide those, this term, for you and for those that are uh, especially newer to the church. Let me talk about Connect 101 for a moment. How many know that when you first start coming to a church, you need some initial connection to be able to say, you know what, I don't want to just show up and kind of be familiar and shake someone's hand once a week. I really need that, especially when you first start coming. Well, we provide Connect 101, and many of you guys have done this with us, but Jessica and I, we open up our home for a relaxed time. We talk about our core beliefs, and we would want to encourage you that if you've not been through Connect 101 starting January 27th, Join us for those six weeks or eight weeks as we discuss our our core beliefs. It's a great time of fellowship, and it's 6 o'clock, and they meet at our house. Our address is in there, and we love, we would love, we would love for you to join us in that. All right? So that's Connect 101. Connect 201 is the next step to become an official member of the Gateway Church. And we do that usually on a, a weekend. We do a weekend class. And this time around is going to be March 23rd, 9 o'clock. We usually meet at the Grand Traverse Pie Company. We reserve their room there. And it's great. We have great refreshments, a uh, great time together, talking across the table, getting to know each other for the group that kind of comes in together. And then through that process, you'll meet with our board members. And, and uh, we, uh, we just encourage you in a few different ways. And then we welcome you to the church officially. And it's a great process. And you say, well, boy, is membership important? Well, we say absolutely it's important. You become an official part of the church and you become connected uh, officially where you have a voice um, when we make decisions as a church and those types of things. And uh, yes, we would say we would encourage everybody to be a member. And then Connect 301, it's been several years since we've done this. Some of you have been through it, but we call it Master Level Leadership. How many of you believe that the church is called to equip the saints for ministry? That we're all to be disciple makers. And we want to be working with each other, encouraging one another along the process to be as sharp as we possibly can. And I would say this, that whether you're a business person or a stay-at-home mom or a student, you would benefit. Your life, your ministry, your job, your schooling would benefit from connecting with us with Connect 301. It says in here, do you want to be used by God in your life? If so, don't miss out on our Master Level Leadership Training. And again, our desire is that every single volunteer, future, uh, past volunteers, that we would meet. And we're going to start this Wednesday night going through Master Level Leadership, 7 o'clock to 8.15. Our students are going to be a part of that for for half of it. And uh, it's going to be a a high-energy, exciting time to look at uh, our leadership skills and to hone those skills and to become sharper and better. And so we want you to make that a priority. Now, let's open up the, uh, the flyer here together. There's some things for men. There's some things for women. There's some things for everyone. And I want to take the opportunity here, first of all, uh, to introduce Becca uh, Kenny. And uh, I see, is Josh here too? All right, Josh, why don't you come on up and we're going to talk about this one that says, uh, for everyone, some beginning ballroom dancing. All right, explain your heart and why you're wanting to do that, yeah? Um, Hi, everybody. (laughs) Um, I'm Becca. I just had it laid on my heart when Pastor Ben started talking about the connecting points that I really wanted to share my love of of dance with the church. And um, I just thought that ballroom dancing is just great. It's it's great for couples. It's great for singles. It can help you learn how to deal with people and and learn how to lead and follow. And it's just really important, I feel, for everybody to know how to do those things. But um, it's great for exercise and all that kind of stuff. You don't need any... Um, dance experience at all. We can teach you everything, so it's just going to be fun. So we have like a little demonstration we're going to do for you guys. So you can I'm excited about this. Kind of see what it's like. All right, let's see it. All right.
Isn't that exciting? And so we want to encourage those of you that would be interested in that to come on out on Monday night starting January 28th. It'll run right through uh, the end of April, Monday night, 7 to 9. It's going to be a blast. And Becca, we're, I'm so glad that you connected with us in that way. Another small group that's for women and kind of for women only is the Ladies Craft Night. And I'm going to ask Bonnie to come on up and talk a little bit about this. We have uh, four dates, uh, one starting in January 22nd. It's the last, uh, it looks like the last Tuesday night of each month, or the fourth. And uh, explain what you guys have been doing and what we'll continue to do with our craft nights. All right. Well, with the craft nights, it's, it's, you don't have to have a particular craft or anything like that. It could be yarn craft, either knitting, crocheting. Just, it's really more of a time to just get together and uh, be with other ladies and to just have a good time of fellowship and to enjoy each other's company. Um, there's been things like sewing quilts and sewing mm-hmm. scarves and sewing all sorts of things. So there's sewing, there's jewelry making. Um, even Jessica came out for one that yeah. she made this lampshade for Reagan's room. It's so you know, cool. It's like all those ideas you see on Pinterest, Yeah, this is the night to do them. There you go. <laughs> so it's the fourth Tuesday of every month. Excellent. And bring a craft, bring something to sew, and bring a snack, for yeah. goodness sakes. And uh, they have a great time, and uh, Lucinda and Bonnie are uh, working with that. There's also one right underneath that for women. It's called WOW, Women of Wisdom. It's a women's Bible study. And you know, we did a survey in the fall, and they're one of the number one things that our ladies were asking for was an opportunity for some Bible study, for some fellowship for ladies. And uh, Mandy is not here today. She's working. She'll talk about this next week. But uh, they're going to be going through a book, uh, The Resolution for Women by Priscilla Shiver. And you can pick up that book the first and third Tuesday of the month, 7 o'clock on those Tuesday nights, starting February 5th. They're going to meet right here at the church. And ladies, don't miss it. Get involved. Put it on your calendar right today and uh, plan on being a part of that and grow uh, together with the women. Now, there's a couple things for guys. And uh, Pete, why don't you come and talk about the the guys uh, that you meet with that you have been meeting and will continue to meet with on Friday mornings, all right? Yeah, so um, what we're doing is we're having like a young adult guys Bible study kind of thing where we're going through a a Bible reading plan. It's kind of a one-year Bible reading plan, and it's 8 o'clock every Friday morning at Grand Traverse Pie Company. It's real close, and we just, it's a good time just to connect together. We meet. We kind of discuss what we've been reading. Um, you know, Ethan Scott's there sometimes, Jocelyn Mee, Luke Hardy, Nate Sowen. And uh, it's just a really good group of guys that um, I, I really enjoy meeting with them, hearing their heart, and just, you know, what we're going through. And so we, we'd encourage you, if you're a young, you know, young, young adult male, you have some extra time, stop out with us. Um, you can come and go as you please. It's not real... Um, structured in, in that way, just, you know, we, we're there at 8 o'clock, and, um, you know, we, we have breakfast and, and just talk and, and enjoy God's Word and fellowship, and it's a lot of fun, so I encourage you guys, you know, even if you, know, you may know somebody um, who might benefit from that, send them our way, um, we have a good time, I, every, every, mo- every time we leave, I just feel blessed, encouraged, and cool. just, you know, with a group of guys who are like-minded, you know, heading in the same direction, keeping each other accountable and things of that. So it's, it's a blessing to me, and I know it'll be a blessing to you. Love it. Love it. Thanks, Pete. And I'm so glad that you're doing that. We have another Bible study for men. Uh, Bob Boss is in California right now uh, with Michelle. And uh, you could be praying for them. Uh, Michelle's mom, uh, these last couple days have, have really deteriorated. She stopped eating and stopped uh, drinking. And so the email last night I got was, it's just a matter of uh, hours or days at the most um, uh, for Michelle's mom. And uh, they, they're they praying for salvation for their mom, for her mom. And uh, so we could be praying for them. But Bob Boss, he has a heart for men. And guys, uh, for those of us that work, uh, that have to get to work by 7 or 7.30 or even 8 o'clock, uh, it's 6 o'clock on Tuesday mornings starting February 5th. They'll run through the end of April and they meet at Russ's. And uh, many of you have been a part of that. And uh, we're going to continue. They're going to be starting uh, to either study the Philippians or Ephesians. And I couldn't remember and uh, didn't get the connection with Bob before we printed, but uh, that's going to be a great time. 
Another connection point is men's breakfast, and many of you have been a part of those. Uh, we've got three planned, February 2nd, uh, March 2nd, April 6th. Each, each one of those, we bring in a guest speaker to challenge us, a great meal together. We want to make those a priority, guys. And, uh, and then I want to uh, turn over to the last page, um, and uh, Linda, uh, one of the things that you guys have done and are continuing to do is to ha- open up your home on Friday nights. And so talk a little bit about that and what that looks like. Up here. I know. I was going to ask George. I was going to ask George to do it, but he's not feeling well this morning. Well, we have a group at our house on Friday night. It starts at 6:30, and it's open to anybody who wants to come. Mm-hmm. We have a wonderful time. We come in and we sit at the table, and we have uh, food. Yeah. And different oh. ones bring food each time. And um, uh, Pastor Pale always fills in if Brother John can't do it. Uh-huh. Uh, Friday night he was sick. They came and they didn't even get in the house and <laughs> they had to go back home mm-hmm. so Pastor Pale filled in and and I appreciate the fact that people are ready in season and out of season sure. you know he could just fill in for them sure. and we have singing uh, we have a couple guitar players yeah. and um, good fellowship and we always have a word and then we have prayer afterwards and so if anybody's interested in coming um, I think our address is in the it bulletin. is yep Okay. Show up so 7 o'clock or 6.30, 6.30. on Friday yeah. evenings. We, we try to go a couple hours, but it's so good that we always go over. Yeah, <laughs> so plan on staying late <laughs> and then sleeping in on Saturday morning. There you go. <laughs> That's great. And then, Eric, why don't you come and tell us a little bit about uh, your heart for outreach. Sure. And I'm one of the most excited ones uh, on here is the opportunity for us to get to grow in our reaching out. And so Thanks. talk a little bit about bringing the kingdom. Well, this is something I used to do when I was on staff with the church in Grand Rapids. And bringing the kingdom is something that God placed on my heart. And he's given me a a small team of people. And what we're going to do is we're going to be partnering with local churches to help mobilize the body of Christ into going out and reaching out to people in our communities. Awesome. There are people that are sitting in their homes that it's very unlikely that they'll just wake up some Sunday morning and come to church. Um, And so God has called us to go knock on their doors. What we're going to do is we're going to equip the body with a very, um, very simple way to begin a conversation with people to find out where they're at in their spiritual beliefs Mm -hmm. and to present the gospel to them. And it's outlined in a way that anybody can do it. So what we're going to do is gather on Saturdays, one per month, and equip, have a time of equipping. And then we're going to go out in teams into strategic areas to visit people in their homes We're going to come back and we're going to offer a soup supper or some type of Mm -hmm. dinner for the community. And then we're going to wrap up the night with an all-out worship, time of worship and strategic prayer for revival in our communities. So really want to encourage you to be a part of it. Absolutely. And those days are going to be uh, start at 1 o'clock and then kind of work through the evening. And so it's a big commitment uh, for that day. But I'm telling you, it'll bless you. And I want to encourage you. There's two that are planned this term, March 23rd, April 27th. March 23rd is we're going to do it as a church, and we're going to blitz our community. And then the following month, we're going to actually be up in Whitehall. And so we'll be going up, being a part of their same sort of training, same sort of blitzing the community, just an opportunity to be used by God. And uh, Eric, I'm so glad that uh, you wanted to help us out in that way and uh, come alongside. And uh, it's going to be great, and I'm excited about those. You bet. All right. And then the last one, um, I, it's, it's kind of interesting. If you know me at all, um, I said I wanted to lead one of these small groups. And I know we do the Connect 101, 201, 301 that I'm a part of. But I wanted to do something uh, that kind of itched this, uh, scratched the itch of the adventurous soul. And, uh, and so I, uh, the Lord kind of led me to an idea in the fall. And when I was preaching about this, and I saw on, uh, so a friend of mine sent me a link to this guy that did these micro adventures one a week and he got paid to do it and uh, he would do small close to home inexpensive things and he would videotape these and then they're out on on the internet and uh, he sold them and uh, was sponsored and I'm like you know what (coughs) excuse me he called them micro adventures and uh, they're just great little adventures close to home and uh, there's all kinds of excuses that those of us that want to be adventurous, we kind of come up with things like, well, we need, we need lots of time for adventures, or we need a lot of skill, or we need a lot of money, or we need sunshine, or 
We have all these great ideas. You have to have great ideas for our quest to be worthwhile. Well, none of those are true because we live in West Michigan and there's all kinds of things that we can do. And so once a month, we're going to do some things together. And the first one's coming up January 26th. I'm excited. We're going to lead, uh, Greg and I are going to lead a, uh, a hike from Coast Guard Park to Hoffmaster, and this is for anybody. We'll have some that will want to kill it on the trail. We'll have others that will be a little slower on the trail, and so we want to encourage you to come out and be a part of that. At the end, we'll have a great time. That's uh, January 26th. Then, February 23rd, if there's snow, which we're believing that there will be uh, by that point, we're going to do some cross-country skiing. And uh, if you have cross-country skis, bring them out. Otherwise, it's eight bucks for two hours. We're going to meet out at Pigeon Creek for uh, at one o'clock and uh, have a great time for, with that. And then I'm pretty excited about April, uh, Friday night and Saturday. There's a ministry called Free Water Experience that is willing to connect with us and it can be guys and gals, to go survival camping. You say, what in the world is that? I can't even tell you because I really don't know exactly, but it sounds like a blast. And uh, what we're going to do on a Friday and Saturday, in essence, is we will get a list of 10 things that we can bring into the woods. And that's all we can bring. And uh, uh, Russ, he's a great man of God, loves the Lord. He's going to work with us actually at the men's breakfast on April 6th. And, um, and, t- and after that, have a, a connection with those that are interested to kind of get us uh, signed up. It's $25 for that one. If you need help with that, uh, it basically the $25 goes to uh, Russ for his ministry. And uh, it's going to be fun. And we're going to go spend a night out in the woods and uh, pretty rustic. A survival type camp, and that will be a lot of fun. All right? And so those are our connecting points. And, you know, as we are launching it today, we're believing that it's just a starting point. And my prayer is that, that each of us would see the need in our own lives for something like this to get, out, to get past the past, to move forward, like Philippians 3 described last week. And my prayer is is that we would make our relationship with God a priority. And knowing that if that's going to be a priority, we need each other. John 17, 21, that we would be one together, that we would fulfill the call on our lives to be together. And it's not like we're just adding things into our schedule. These are things that we believe that you would want to do or that would energize you anyways. And we just want to bring some intentionality to it and do it for the Lord. And that's our heart. So this morning, as we close, in just a moment, we're going to give you an opportunity, if you're away from the Lord, and uh, to respond. Uh, and we're going to give a salvation call here in just a moment. But we also, as part of our response today, we'd like for you to take this connecting point survey and to, and, and to look through maybe some, the 12 connecting points that we have for this term for January through April and say, boy, I would be interested in the following connecting points offered this term. Now, by, con- by checking these off doesn't necessarily mean that, you're, that we're going to stick it to you, that you have to do it. But you're saying, you know what, I would possibly be interested, and that'll give us some opportunity to kind of see where the interest lies uh, for those. But then I want you to also, as we respond uh, here at the end, is to consider about the summer, which will be here before we know it, right? All the snow will be gone if it ever comes. <laughs> but I want you to also think about what would you be interested in participating in or leading as far as connecting points for the summer term, May through August. And it might be something in regards to the Bible, you know, a, a topic or an idea of interest there, a practical life one, finances, parenting, marriage, or a social group, craft, sporting, uh, something outdoorsy. What would interest you for those? To put your name, phone number, and then we're going to compile those. It'll give us a chance to follow up for this term and be planning for the future because we know that we can't just offer this one time. We need to be about God's business all the time. And we want to give people opportunity to connect, to be committed to discipleship. And so we would like for every single one of you guys to fill those out here in just a moment. All right, now, our time is expiring, and uh, I want to pray for you this morning. 
And uh, maybe you came this morning and you said, boy, uh, before I leave, I need to be anointed with oil. And, and uh, we would certainly uh, make opportunity to do that. But before we leave, before you head out, and uh, even before you maybe fill these out, uh, I want you to consider your own life with the Lord. And maybe today is the day of salvation for you. Maybe you've been kind of going through life, and, and maybe you've been curious about salvation or about Jesus. And maybe you're at a point of decision today saying, you know what, I came today ready to give my heart to the Lord. If that's you, I want to give you that opportunity to respond and uh, making that a priority in your life. And uh, if that's you, would you be bold enough just to lift up your hand? I'm not going to embarrass you, call you out, but I do want to pray with you and just ask God to touch you. Is there anyone here this morning that would respond to a salvation call today? Anyone at all? Taking a quick look. Last week, three people, a young person and uh, two older adults returned to the Lord and uh, just making their hearts right with the Lord. It was awesome. Anybody today saying, boy, that's, that's my heart today to get my life right with the Lord. Okay. All right. Well, then this is what I'd like to do. I didn't see any hands there today. I'd like for you to really consider this idea of these connecting points, of connecting with each other, the idea that there is no discipleship without relationship and that we're all called to be disciples and to be discipling someone else. And I'm going to ask that you would take a moment and fill out this survey. Mark some areas maybe that you would be interested in for this term and then consider some things for the summer term as well. And what I'd like to do is to just turn on some worship music just nice and light. And then when you're finished filling those out, I'd like for you to bring those forward and we'll just add them to the prayer request list here. You can just put them in here. We'll gather those up and then you can be dismissed. And so that's the way we'll close this morning. Let me pray for you and then we'll put the music on. Lord, I pray this morning for each and every person here that we would realize our great need for each other to connect with one another for your glory, for your honor. God, I pray that you would help us in every area. And Lord, I pray that you'd speak to our hearts. Give us, uh, illuminate our spirits. And even like you did Becca in the fall with this uh, ballroom dancing, God, I pray that you'd put ideas in some of our hearts of things we could do in the summer or the fall. Lord, for your glory, for your honor. Lord, we ask all these things. Bless us as we go. In Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Just take a moment, fill those out, bring those forward, and then we'll be 